Hello and welcome, uh, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Remco Rinkema, and I am joined by one of my best friends, my favorite person from Brazil, Felipe Ramos. Thank you so much for joining us. 2 a.m. where you are, and you made time for us. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, after that introduction, my friend, that's like uh, 300 million people in Brazil right now, so I'm very happy. <laughs> What's up, guys? <laughs> oh, man, it's so good to have you with us. For the people who are new to the show, this is Run It Back. We are watching high stakes poker tonight we have season seven queued up we're going to watch some epic bluffs we're going to watch a whole bunch of crazy hands happening and we're going to watch it with felipe if you have any questions for felipe please drop them in the chat we are live on youtube and facebook wherever you might be watching we are keeping an eye on the chat box and we are running high stakes poker in the background if you have questions about the action about us about the game about poker go about high stakes poker anything goes tonight uh, Felipe is having coffee, which I just heard. I poured myself yeah. a cocktail. I tried to get a uh, Brazilian here, try to make a caparinha, but I didn't have any of the ingredients. Um, what's, what's, oh. your, what's your go-to drink usually? Man, I would say that caipirinhas, the um, organic ones are so nice because they're like uh, plain. It's like either lemon, king sugar, and uh, the Brazilian cachaça, which is our source of tequila. And uh, that, that's my favorite. It's like lemon, sugar cane, cachaça. Nothing else. Just as that. I love it. Do you, do you drink when you play poker, when you play live? Or are you always fruit juice focused, coffee, espresso? Yeah, man, I'm, I, I never drink. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, when I'm playing, I consider this uh, as my work. And uh, most... Uh, I won't. I, I won't even say most of the time because I can surely say that nobody has ever saw me drinking at a poker table. Never. Wow. Let's say. Let's say, despite of charity events, playing with friends, then of course uh, uh, I'm gonna have a beer, a caipirinha. That's for sure. And uh, I, I'll drink socially 100% of the time at home when I go out. I like wine. But uh, not never, never have had to drink while while playing poker. I don't recall. Wow. So at least now you have a chance to, to watch some of this high stakes poker action. Um, did you were you a fan of high stakes poker back in the day? And how how was this show received in Brazil? Because I can imagine it might have been hard to find over there because I know from the Netherlands, we had to find it online somewhere. It was really tough to find. And now, of course, it's all in poker. Go. So what was that like for you back then? Exactly. Like, uh, I think we come from pretty much uh, same background for poker because uh, we do not have these shows over uh, TV. So we probably watched these shows quite a bit later uh, over uh, internet. But uh, funny, funny story is that I think... Um, High stakes poker was shown on TV in Brazil as well during during the night on uh, some alternative channel. Like I mean, all these big networks they probably own all their smaller channels anyways, and uh, that must be it. So I recall of watching high stakes poker on TV and also the WPT as well was something that I saw on TV long long time ago back in like I think. 05, 06, something like that. Yeah, no, for sure. Now, that's when all this stuff first started airing, of course. We are now watching Season 7. This is Episode 1 of Season 7. Vanessa Selps in the mix, Barry Greenstein, Antonio S. Fandiari. We got uh, Robert Croak, Phil, um, Phil Ruffin, Bill Klein, uh, David Pete Viffer, and, of course, the legend himself, Mr. Doyle Brunson, in action. We got a really cool hand here right off the start, so let's listen to what they have to say, and let's, let's hear Felipe's thoughts after this hand. Discipline laid down by Barry. And Croak flat calls with jacks. Ladies and gentlemen. And that brings in Klein it. and also Pete. I hope somebody gets whacked for 200 on the spot. <laughs> Just get things going, you know? Right, Bill? Absolutely. Gee, that's nice to say when you're not in it. Correct. There's always a nine. Croak's jacks lead. Vanessa fires in a continuation bet. What is that? 7,600. 
Robert Croak, who amassed a fortune when he created silly bands, is now wondering if Vanessa is just making a silly bet. So he'll try to find out with the min raise. Good old min raise on the flop with the overpair. And we all know, you know Vanessa too. This hand is not over yet. <laughs> it's not over. <laughs> little stewage. How much did you throw it? 200. That, you never want to hear that question if you're not 100% sure. How, how much do you have? How much can I raise? Exactly. <laughs> and uh, that back in the day looked so much bluffy. I don't see that too much nowadays anymore, <laughs> but back in the day when you look at all these hands look so much bluffy. So have you played a lot against Vanessa? Because obviously we're going to see her make a move, or sorry, she makes a call here. Um, what's your experience playing against her? Yeah, I played against Vanessa a lot of times. That's uh, definitely a lot of times. And uh, this game is actually very, very cool because it's already like a mix of the legends with like uh, some newcomers, but poker stars at the at the at the at the moment such as Vanessa so I like I like this and I, I think that by this time we could have been uh seeing these episodes as they aired yeah uh I, I think so and uh, she's she's like uh I mean I don't know how much poker she plays uh here today anymore but uh back in the day she was very feared poker player like you can never predict what she's gonna do. Very hard to figure out uh, what kind of range she's playing because she would have some odd ranges. I mean, it's not a criticism, but like she would simply decide to play some sort of hands where she shouldn't be playing and and, and force the action a little bit, which which makes which makes her a unique player, which makes her a unique player. For sure, yeah. Here she barrels on the turn, bets 28,400 when the third heart shows up. Obviously, she has the backdoor heart draw. Robert Croak there lays down the jacks, Felipe. What do you think about that? Laying down the jacks against Vanessa, who obviously is known as a very aggressive player. Well, I like to talk first about the fundamentals of the hand. Okay, I let's go. Like, yeah, I think like uh, fundamentally, like uh, you want to put, a, put another raise in that game when you, when you get dealt jacks. Right. So when you go for that flop and you're going to play a four-way, five-way flop uh, with jacks, even when you have the overpair, you're not very uh, comfortable on that kind of a board, on a flush draw and uh, a straight draws, kind of a wet board there. So uh, you might have as well some problems to figure out what to do, especially when you put out such a, such a, small raise on the flop which i think that that was the opportunity that vanessa saw uh to explore her opponent i think that 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 play on the flop i don't get me wrong i mean raise sometimes i like that play i just i just think that he uh chose the the wrong spot uh in many in many ways for doing that play by like uh wrong sizing for the board wrong sizing when you when you're talking about who you're playing against uh there's also a situation where uh if you don't raise if you if you raise minimal on that flop and you see that these players are aggressive they have money you, you you're not protecting your hand either right which is some which is something very important on that board so that's why I said let's start with the fundamentals because I don't like the mini race because like it, it makes it doesn't make much sense for to me. And then Vanessa sees the spot. She sees the opportunity to take some advantage. And now forget about the fundamentals and let's just try to explore our opponent and go for their weaknesses. And I think that's the best Vanessa can offer. So from what I've seen her play. I'll say that I'll say that she, she 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 back in the day she did that so much better than the other pros that for that for that particular reason. Right. But 
uh, when you're not closing the action, act, uh, actually, I, it's, it's, it's so, 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 so much, uh, something funny about the hand that you just want to be a hero, just want to win the hand, you know, show that you, you, you play good. I don't know if that play is ever necessary. I think, like, uh, if I'm playing heads up against, against a guy, it's a three bad pot, and you can put some creativity there. I love it. But when, you, when you're playing all the time far away pots, people are gambling, and you're trying to, to, to bluff on the flop, it's, it, it, it's, a, it's something that in my, in my situation doesn't fit as well. So I feel, I feel really good about her play, and I feel really bad about her play at the same time. <laughs> I love that. That's, that's sort of quintessential Vanessa. You love seeing it, but it also makes you a little bit scared. Um, welcome to everyone in the chat. I'm seeing a lot of new names and new faces pop up here. Let us know where you're watching from. Let us know if you're having a drink. I'm having a beverage. I tried to imitate the famous Brazilian Caprinha. I failed, but it's still a great drink. We are watching High Stakes Poker Season 7. Please stay with us. We are watching a whole lot of poker awesome. today. We have a great hand going on right now with Vanessa Selps making it $63,000 against Phil Ruffin, who flopped a set of threes. Vanessa getting involved once again. You guys can pay close mind to the action. But also, make sure to note that if you want to watch all seven seasons of High Stakes Poker right now, you can watch all of that on Poker Go. Use the promo code POKER30. Poker 3-0 to take an extra $30 off the annual subscription. Only applies to annual subscription. So, um, guys, we are deep in the action here. Vanessa Selps has made it, uh, made a big raise. And then Phil Ruffin comes back over the top, makes it $117,000 with a set. Phil Ruffin, successful businessman. Let's see if Vanessa can get away from her pocket queens. Vanessa starts to talk. I haven't looked yet, so that's good. <laughs> She's fishing for information that Ruffin just gave her with that raise. But do you like your hand? It's okay. It's okay? Yeah. But not super amazing? <laughs> God, I didn't expect that. I have to say I didn't expect that. What could she be thinking? Tens or jacks, the only hand she's a big favorite against. All right, I'm all in. All call. In. Snap call. Oh, boy. And she knows she's yes. dead now. Yep. Nice hand. Vanessa looks like she's in shock. You want to, how many, do you want to run it more than once? Or? No. No? <laughs> he might not know what running it twice means, but he knows if Vanessa asks, it's a bad idea. So, 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 Felipe, if if a, if a if a rich old man puts in this much money on a nine four three flop, it, are there any options besides a set? Yeah, but that's that's exactly what I said just before. Uh, I feel good and I feel bad, being completely honest, because the way she plays, I don't think she can ever lay down the over pairs and the strong hands. Right. You know. It's just like the style she puts in so she can rig big whenever the situation happens. So this one, I'm with Vanessa. This one, I'm with her. Because even though, even though a guy like that puts on a big race and we always have a hand, she may, she may also be, be thinking that she's getting exploited sometimes because she bluffs too much. So it's hard. But that's the part I say good about, I say good about her and I, I like what she does. But when you come to the other side, it comes exactly to the situation, as you said, uh, with all the respect, an old man, businessman coming to the game, applying a large check raise. I, I mean, the guy, the guy has it, you know? You just know the guy has it. So like uh, you need to execute, uh, execute the fold. I don't care what you have. If you don't have the nuts there, it's it's it, it it's a it's a hand you need to lay down. Right, right. No, I totally agree. Of course, Vanessa now analyzing the hand while we are also doing our own analysis. Um, any Brazilians in the chat, please let me know. I, I'm going to try to pronounce some of these words in Brazilian if we get some questions in the chat. Um, I take pride in being able to pronounce stuff pretty well, but uh, this might be my moment to fail. Hopefully, uh, they send some questions <laughs> in and then I can, I can try to get those across to the people watching. 
A uh, shout out, by the way, to Carl, Laszlo, Barris, Chris, um, Diana also with us, Chelsea, Kenneth, Gregory, Kajarania, Phil. He said, oh, it's, it's, it's in Brazilian. I don't even know what this says. Um, okay. Uh, I'm already making, it says, Apcos, Apcos Mojave, Su Seo Fa Tio, Phil. I probably butchered yeah. this. That that's not pretty pretty perfect, but that was very that was hundred percent with the effort. See effort effort. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Uh, shout out as well. That was hundred percent the effort. I'm <laughs> checking out the chat uh, right now. And uh, um, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Thanks for having me, Renko. Thanks very much, uh, Poker Center as well. It's always, always a pleasure. You know, you know, I'm big big uh, fan of the work you guys do besides of being your uh very good buddy so it's a double pleasure oh man did you bring the guitar for tonight oh man we have some guitar, you know, <laughs> guitar of course i knew you had the guitar that's oh. awesome that's awesome all right we, we, we're seeing we're seeing pocket aces by the way right here let's turn it up a little bit and see if this hand goes anywhere makes the bet with the aces they build a better model could see some fireworks here Thanks. expect a raise from Pete. And there it is. Me? Mm -hmm. Sorry. And rough and X and turn for a change. So it's back to climb. Now he's hoping that Pete has a hand like King Queen. Right. Decides to find out. Raising it to 60. Raises it. Yeah, there's an alternative. To 67, and now. Pete is thinking. There's never a shortage of players for a stakes program. And all he's really thinking is is he up against a set? Everybody wants to play a stakes program. Yeah. Against anything else, he's in good shape. I'm all in. And Pete goes all in. There we go. And Klein starts thinking again. Didn't expect that. We've heard that before. That's what I said. That's what they always say. <laughs> Everybody's double parked. Everybody holds exactly still as long as they can and say, ah. Oh. Call. And he calls. It doesn't take us long to get to our second 400,000 plus pot. It's going to be the unclassic coin flip. You run it once or twice? Just one. Good and luck. the pro asked the zillionaire to run it twice. I love that one time, you know, just punish. No. We have an exact 50 50 here on our hands. $428,000 in the middle. Aces for Klein against the Jack 10 suited. Felipe, just on feel, do you want the Aces or do you want the Jack 10? Man, I'd say that uh, it's pretty easy uh to to play aces <laughs> so i like the challenge so <laughs> most of it, most of all i will rather play the jack 10 suitor because uh he has so many possibilities to play and he probably has to bluff more also with the hand too <laughs> so i like more than him but particularly in this situation i i, I rather have uh the, the the aces and oh. um and and and, and pray to hold yeah, we got the made hand, of course, over the draw with the uh, with the pair outs and the trips outs and the flush outs. But obviously, you still got a hit. Yeah, that's why. But not the river. Pete there is, is. going to double up. There it is. Whee! Hard on the, the river. Uh, I don't know if we wanted to see him get out to the lead. Story of my life, too. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, just for this one special occasion for people in the chat. Tell us your latest bad beat stories. We want to hear some bad beat stories. Obviously, this was a coin flip. This was Aces versus Jack Ten of Hearts. Give us some bad beats in the chat. I'm ready for it. I'm having a drink. I can deal with the bad beats. Uh, shout out, by the way, also to uh, Rafael and Larry, watching from Riverdale, Wisconsin. Uh, I believe Rafael is watching from Brazil. Shout out to Brazil. Vamos to everyone who is uh, watching with us. Uh, also, uh, Dan watching on YouTube. Kevin, Alex, uh, thank you guys all so much for joining. Uh, Daniel as well. Um, it's awesome to watch this all with you guys. And I keep repeating myself, but all seven seasons of High Stakes Poker are available on PokerGo, so don't miss any of that action. Felipe, did you ever have a chance 
to play on a game like high stakes poker? Did you ever talk to people to get on a game like this? Or did you guys do something in Brazil that was maybe similar to this? Well, uh, by that point, this game was running. Um, I think, do you know exactly the year of this game? The last year they filmed was 2011. Okay. So yeah, by 2011, I was already a poker pro. I used to play uh, at that time, uh, high stakes PLO. So I, I, I didn't really play too much of bigger of games back then of no limit holding because I used to be a, a two five and a five ten uh, regular cash game player for uh, no limit holding. And then uh, with my career evolution, then I started playing uh, high stakes no limit holding as well. But that shift came to my came to my life only because of the mixer games because I started playing on the big mixer games, and some new players coming up they would always request to play no limit holding as well and some other games they were comfortable with. That's when I I started to uh, get my no limit holding game cash game better. So that was also good for me, but uh, I remember that uh, from that from that particular uh, season of 2010 2011 I was way more focused on the on the tournaments, having my first uh, appearances over the WSOP final tables and uh, this kind of stuff. And, but I always played big games uh, back home in Brazil. Of course, the games were not this big, especially right. because of the currency rate, but maybe, uh, no, certainly the biggest games in the country. Right. That's, that's bottom line. So from there, I always play the biggest games there. Actually, that's my background. So people think that I may come from a rich family or something like that. No, I, I made my way up playing all those big cash games. And that was always a huge, huge chunk of my bank rolls of the, of the bank roll I've been using uh, for my tournament play. Uh, that was all cash, they were all cash game winnings. And uh, as my career developed, uh, of course I couldn't play this game at that point, but I actually got to play some shows and some big games as well. Um, uh, I think the last big one, the last big one I played was, uh, Invitational at King's Casino, where the, um, the straddles were up to 1600 euros. So wow. that was a pretty big game as well. Wow. That's awesome. That's, that's really, really cool. All right. We have ace queen versus ace queen Antonio versus Selps. Let's see who wins with the same hand here. She looks over at the stack of Antonio. I'm all in. All in. <laughs> this really oh, puts pressure nice on Antonio. Really cannot make this call. I like this table. As you can tell by his smile <laughs> over the zipper. <laughs> These are the pigeons. Some days are the statue. Yeah. <laughs> by the way, shout out to Duel Brunson who says, some days you're the pigeon, some days you're the statue. Which is just, <laughs> it's just the perfect quote. Sometimes you're the windshield, sometimes you're the moon. Yeah. I've been watching, I've been watching, following, following up with his tweets over yours about the top 10, whatever. Oh, man. That, that's yeah. been a discussion, huh? <laughs> yeah. That has become a discussion. I've got Thank over, you, I've got over <laughs> like 500 responses to that tweet. Yeah. I know. I like, I don't like to answer those questions. And uh, kudos to you. All the respect for for putting up a list because that's what uh good uh journalists good people do if people ask me that i would say i i'll probably won't say anything <laughs> i mean you got to put yourself out there sometimes to, to have some discussion going don't trust me I, I i'm the guy people show up to my streams or to my social media because they know i speak what i think right so so i don't have i have no issue with that it's just like what i believe when I believe about poker talent, that was the discussion. Poker talent, raw talent, something. Uh, Daniel was trying to be more incisive about this too. Like uh, I, I completely, 
I, I disagree totally with your list and you probably understand better than me about what you're saying. So that's <laughs> insane. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I do. And it's awesome. And for, and for some context for the people. And please, yeah. please play this game with us in the chat if you want. I put a tweet out there saying or asking people for opinions on who are the top 10 most talented poker players ever. And I'm not talking about most bracelets. I'm not talking about who has the most money. I'm not talking about who is, who is the best player right now. No talent raw talent who has the most talent so that is obviously a very very difficult question there is no right answer there's a, but there's a lot of wrong answers probably but there's no right answer and i came up with a list the list is on my twitter at remco rinkama it's a pinned tweet on my profile so you can check it out over 500 responses from people like brian rast and daniel negrano and doyle brunson everyone was chiming in and i think it's well worth trying for yourself to put that list together and if you're a poker fan you've obviously watched these guys play for many many hours and i myself has probably watched the most poker of anyone out there so it's been really fun putting this list together and i was really happy when Brian Rast, his list was very similar to my list, which is good news for me, obviously. But definitely, I forgot a few names, and it's really, really impossible. And I think Vanessa Selps is one of the players that I forgot. Like, her raw talent, her ability to, like, be aggressive and, and think in the moment and put people under pressure, that is worth a lot as well. So let us know in the chat, who are the most talented poker players you've ever seen play? I mean, there's just so many ways to go about this. Yeah. I just like, I just think that uh, when we talk about raw talent, me, me myself as a poker player, as I, as I played against many people and I, and I, I can feel like uh, what they're doing and how, how that's going to affect my behavior, for instance, at a poker table. So for, I have all the respect to the men, the me, Phil Ivy. <laughs> Uh, bottom line, it's it's like I mean, all due respect, but I I don't I wouldn't put that thing on top of the list. For instance, I think that other people might have some more uh, some more like uh, I mean, some more. When you say talent, a person that's really 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 talented is a person that loves poker above anything. In my when I when I when I talk about this, you know, that's my that's my feeling. And uh, that's why you play poker with that passion. And I don't, I, I, I don't see that passion. I mean, from 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 him. But I know that when we're talking about decisions, decision making, and playing poker, you gotta put the guy on the top of the world. And that's where he deserves to be. That so respect. But I mean, I've seen some crazy plays from so many players, like. Uh, I mean, I, I recently I saw two big plays of like a, some sort of like a 10 high call from Ryan Reese, some sort <laughs> of like a fourth pair call on the huge tournament from Green Kenny. I mean, these, these guys, these guys for me lately, by having the, 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 the balls to play, to play that kind of poker, I'll, I'll, I'll have to toss it in those names in there, you know? All right. Uh, uh, as well, and I don't see some other of these players doing this this kind of doing this kind of plays uh, to in order to to put in there because like Negrano, Negrano is my hero. Everybody knows we did a back interview, a big interview back in the day. You found the blogs where I read his blogs and the info over there where I started playing poker because of because of the guy. And uh, and uh, and he was in a discussion with Federholz about if uh, talent it's something that you develop in your work ethic and so on, or just or, or just your feelings, you know, just like uh, if you're natural for for the game of poker. So for sure, there's a lot of room for discussion there. That's why people cannot get uh, agree on a list. Because you also will will have like a, you don't actually have like a, some sort of like a way of measurement. Right. You're probably gonna go with what you feel like, and so so that means that no list is wrong. 
That's true. That's a good point. Like, can I ask you to tilt your laptop back a little bit because your your head's getting cut off on my feet right here? Yeah. I'll, okay. And <laughs> that's that's even better. That's even better. Um, all right, we got we got another big hand here going on. By the way, cheers with your coffee. My drink is emptying pretty quickly. I might have to run out and get another one. Um, let's turn nice. up the volume a little bit. And um, actually, Greenstein gets it done here. Let's go back. Let's let's let me scroll back a little bit. This is run it back, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. If you just want to watch high stakes poker, go to Poker Go right now. Use the promo code Poker30 to get thirty dollars off the annual subscription. If you want to hear us have fun and take your questions and watch high stakes poker with you, stay here. Otherwise, go over there and watch high stakes poker right now. There's no talking. So let me just tell you that this hand is interesting. Let's go back in time a little bit. I'm gonna scroll back the, through the power of technology. This hand is very interesting. We're going to see, and obviously, because it's high stakes poker, it starts out with about seven million people in the hand. So um, let's uh, <laughs> let's listen to this hand. And Klein will call with Queen Seven suited. I'm glad you did. I'd have had to play this hand if you'd called it. <laughs> you just wait for Viffer to come in. So six players to the flop, which is surprising, yeah, even more surprising. Viffer's not one of them. I know how it is. That's cost me a lot of money. Well, that's a bad, bad hand too. The flop, Jack Four Tray. So the nines, the best hand, odd in a six-way pot. Looks like Klein's thinking of picking it up right here, but checks. Six falls, now that's an interesting card. It gives a flush draw to Klein and an open-ended straight draw to Vanessa. Now Klein also has a straight draw. So he might be thinking of raising, but calls. Back to Vanessa. Now she might not want to play with two possible flush draws out on the table. Well, she will. A little questionable. Big card on the end, it's a diamond. That'll scare everybody. And it's also the queen for the man in position. And it's checked to him. Klein can either turn over his cards now, but it looks like he might be thinking of making a value bet here. So far, nothing strange. Klein value betting the queen here on the end. Not a lot of action and strength being shown. Vanessa gives up the pair of fives, obviously missing her draw. And now it's up to Barry Greenstein facing a bet of 23K. Let's see what Barry does. Maybe not. Maybe he's going to pay him off. Raise 100. Yes. Whoa. He just raised it 100,000. He clearly. So while this hand is going on, Felipe, is this a matter of, of Barry thinking that if Bill would hit his flush, he would never lead out? Is that sort of his thinking? No, I don't think that exactly. But I think more of the way that it's very hard for Bill to have a flush playing the hanging position that way. Right. So whenever he faces a, a bet there on the river, he he spotted like uh, some sort of weakness, which which doesn't mean it's a bluff, which means like it's some sort of thin value. You know, some hand you you want to get some more out of it, but like you, you not actually have a strong hand, so. Uh, that play is simply amazing. I love that play. You spot the weakness, and and you as a, a good poker player, you just get it done because that's what a good poker player does. I mean, most of the players they'll just let it go, you know, not try to run a bluff there. But if you know what the opponent has, and uh, well, which sort of range he's playing there, and the, that that range does not include flushes. You just got to go ahead and execute the play. I love this play. This play is pretty awesome. I love it as well. If you have questions for Felipe Ramos, please throw him in the chat. He is one of the best players from Brazil. He travels all around the world when there's not a global pandemic going on to play the biggest events. And obviously, he is one of the biggest fans of the World Series of Poker. And if there's anyone that I can pick to win a bracelet, you know, I think Felipe should get one in in like a like a mixed game. I think you should win like 
10k horse or something that would be the perfect bracelet for you i would love to win that tournament and uh i think that's the the tournament i probably will have the best chances anyways so we we will we'll, we'll get one there and then i'll pay you some kaipering as well <laughs> okay i'm there <laughs> on the rail i promise you that all right we got vanessa selbst involved once again here this time with king queen against the deuces of Dol brunson let's see if she's gonna you know try to bluff him off his hand here and vanessa hoping that doyle has two big cards bet out try to steal it here doyle hoping vanessa has two big cards calls and a river three so if doyle thought he had the best hand on the turn he certainly still believes he has the best hand Vanessa, thinking about it, and fires in another bet. Looks over, hoping to get uh, Doyle maybe to lay down an ace. Doesn't realize she's up against monster <laughs> ducks. Just pay it off. She says pay it off, interesting. I like this. Might not want to talk to Doyle in <laughs> hand. King high. And he pays it off. Nice. <laughs> What a call. That's Dole Brunson, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, what a My legend. Part was just pay it off. What a legend. Do, do yeah. you have any, any stories with Dole Brunson? Have you, have you interacted with him before? Oh, man, I'll tell you that uh, for, she hooked herself in these hands. Because, <laughs> like, when, when you, Dole Brunson is a live poker legend. If you talk about poker manners, tells, uh, I think uh, he, if, you, if you make a list out of that, we need to put this this guy on top of it, right? So like, uh, so like, if you want to confuse a guy, just like that on a poker table, you better shut your mouth. <laughs> That's my opinion. <laughs> but but I love the interaction. I'm I'm an interaction guy as well. I like to talk. I like to force my opponents commit mistakes because I think I'm good on that on that table talk. But if you're gonna do a table talk against uh, a guy like Doyle. You need to step up your game. That's that's my opinion. But uh, I haven't had the chance to play versus Doyle. That's probably one of my... Um, if I had to elect one top five list of players that I never played, that I wish I, I could have played against, uh, Doyle will be in it. Who, who else is on the and, list? Any, any names to come to mind? It can be both both living or dead, doesn't matter. Who are on your list of players you've never played yeah. against that would be like the best to play against? Yeah, that would be really nice. I would love to play against Chip Reese as well, yeah. especially because of uh, uh, mixer games and so on. I mean, uh, there will be a list of players that are already gone that will be pretty cool to play against, uh, such as like... Um, I would say maybe Amarillo, Amarillo Slings, probably a cool guy that would be really nice to play like on a very like a old school game. By the and, way, uh, I don't want to interrupt you, but we just saw Bobby's room, by the way. Kara Scott was inside Bobby's room here at the Bellagio. Felipe, when, when are you going to make your Bobby's room debut? Or have you ever played inside? So that's the key. I play in the Bobby's room a couple of times, uh, for sure. But and I, I I saw Doyle playing there uh, many times as well while I'm playing on one of these outer tables. There's like a there's like a, another room at right. the other side on the stairs so, on the on the on the on the platform. Correct. So that's where we normally play. On that room, I played a bunch of times as well. Uh, never against Doyle. Never against Doyle. Actually. The games I used to play there normally some games that uh, they 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 play much bigger. I mean, 300, 600, 400, 800 mix. It's normally the game uh, that I can play and uh, usually play uh, over there. And uh, when not back in the day when I used to to play uh, the 4080 games at the Bellagio, then I will always see Doyle over there. Uh, playing the big games. 
Yeah, it's crazy. My first ever time in Vegas, I saw Doyle and Gus Hansen and Daniel and David Oppenheim, all those guys playing inside Bobby's room. And I just walked in. I, w I walked in and I got like an adrenaline rush. It was just crazy to even see those guys playing. And they were probably playing like 4,000, 8,000, some crazy high stakes. And it's just, it's impossible to understand. Like I make a bluff for $40 and I'm scared. And these guys are playing, sitting down with millions of dollars. It's just absolutely crazy. Um, what's the biggest stakes you've ever played, Felipe? Uh, biggest stakes I ever played, they were, uh, 1k, 2k. Wow. And, uh, yeah, I almost played a cup. I played, I played kind of regularly, uh, 200, 400 game, which for me, it's a lot of money already. So you can get like, a, a huge, uh, six figure swings every, every, uh, session. Right. So it's big, it's big, big enough for me. And then in the end, I we know we have uh, money involved in poker, but like uh, I don't really I when I'm when I'm playing poker, I'm not really involved with the money. It's odd to say that, but that's the truth for me. So if you say there is a there is a game out, I I can uh, I I normally choose my my games very carefully and never choose the game over because. It's a it's a big game for me to play, or a game that I'm gonna show off, or something like this. I never take that in in consideration. Right. No, I mean it, it's it's honestly crazy to, that you've played those stakes. I mean that's just mind blowing. If I would if I would have told Felipe from ten years ago that you were playing those stakes, then you would have been like, that you're crazy. Or or did you know that you were gonna make it big and play those stakes? Like, did you feel like you could make it to the top? No, actually, that's funny because I say no, but the, the answer is yes and no. Because there's a funny story back in the day when I wanted to become a poker pro. I I kind of waited on this because I had a good job. I had actually two jobs and I had stability. I was making some good money for a young kid just uh, off college. And uh, I didn't want to become a poker pro. I wanted to keep on playing on the side, like play the big events over the weekends, play online at night on Sundays. I didn't want to become a poker pro. So then one day um, I got a sponsorship proposal and then I had some money back, uh, somebody saved, decided to give it a shot, but still, go for uh, for uh, post-graduation, still go for a, a master business administration degree. And uh, what happened is that by, by that time, I uh, I was the first player from my region to, to play on a TV tournament and cash on an EPT, for instance. And then everything changed for me. So uh, I was... Uh, from that point on, I became like a, a poker pro because I saw there was no turning back. But despite of having no preference on playing cash games or tournaments, because my career always have been floating half and half since the beginning. So, you, of course, you get the glory you're more recognized when you win the tournaments and uh, not when you grind the cash games and, uh, uh, and so on. But I wrote a blog because of my sponsor asked me, so now you're going to become a poker pro, you sponsor it, pro. I need you to write a blog and put on the blog where you're going to go play, what are your goals. So I had to do that. So I did that. And uh, this was in 2008, January 2008. Wow. Then I put, I put there all my goals, right? Uh, become one of the best poker players in the world because if I'm going to start doing something, I'm not going to aim to be an okay guy. I don't want to play poker part-time anymore. I, I want to make this happen. Right. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to make it work. So I had that in my heart and I had that in my mind. But if you tell me if I would be in this position today, I would say, I would probably say to you an honest big no <laughs> because i know that how hard has has how hard was this path and uh and to get 
to get to get to 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 the situation where I'm at and be blessed to to play on the games uh, that I played today. Right. Shout outs in the chat, by the way. Jeff Platt joining us. I've heard of that guy before. Thanks for joining us. Diana Monat here as well. Of course, uh, Kenneth, Paul, and I see Timothy and Fabiano Borrero from Brazil. Vamos with the Brazilian flags. Thank you for joining us. If you have questions for Felipe, myself, or about anything that's going on in the world of poker, please do let us know. People on YouTube as well with us. Thank you so much for watching. Let us know if you have any questions. We'd love to take those. Obviously, we're watching High Stakes Poker. This is Season 7. If you want to tune in to that action, go to PokerGo right now. Use the promo code POKER30, POKER30, for $30 off the annual subscription. So don't hesitate. Do it now and watch all seven seasons of High Stakes Poker. And with that, I'd like to say we are bringing High Stakes Poker back. Obviously, coronavirus, you know, really sucks. Obviously, awful. But when that all passes and things are safe again, we are going to tape a new season of high stakes poker. So if you want to let us know in the chat, who do you want to see on the return of high stakes poker? Please let us know. Obviously it hasn't been filmed yet. So maybe we'll take your suggestion. Who knows? I have some names in mind. My number one name that I want to see on high stakes poker, and I'm only going to use names that have never played before is jungle man, Dan Cates. I want to see him on high stakes poker. That's going to be incredible. Felipe, give me, give me a few names of players, new players, old players. Who do you want to see on the show? Yeah, so uh, gentlemen, definitely a uh, very uh, top of mind choice. Uh, I would also like to see him playing as well. Uh, um, I think that depending on the game, depending on the game, I'm just going to say just right out there to include or exclude <laughs> uh, my name on the list. Oh, why? Because because depending, depending on the game, I would love to play as well. Okay, Felipe. Give me, give me your 30-second so, pitch for why Felipe Ramos should be on high-stakes poker. Go. I mean, I'm probably going to be uh, the representing the nation in the whole Latin America, South America on the show. So I think that the other guys will have no chance because all the energy, all the good energy will be with me. So the cards will be with me as well. So you can at least uh, expect a score of half a million or a million profit for the day <laughs> <laughs> yes but i love that after the after the joke i mean i'm up to, i'm up for the competition right you know so sometimes you gotta be smart and not be a hero that's how you should take care of your poker career and that's how i actually teach my students so be smart choose your games wisely and uh so that goes a little bit off a little bit against uh, Mojave as a poker coach when I say that I'll be uh, interested in playing on that game. But on the other hand, I also uh, would like to have the opportunity to play on that game. Of course, I have the heart, I have what it takes to play on that game too. So I'm up for the challenge. So uh, when you wait this in, I think that can happen. I agree. I agree. I love that. So you like Jungle Man in the game as well. Do any names come to mind? that of players that you would like to see on the show because there's so many new names as well that have started playing poker even after after this was even filmed so like a lot of young kids that are probably you know going to be fun to watch as well yeah i think i think that there's a lot of uh big guys uh young guys playing high stakes nowadays most of them are playing tournaments over uh cash games so I'm not, I'm not actually sure if these people would like to like uh, show their faces or uh, right. go up for a battle of a uh, cash game. But I think that what makes a game great, it's a mix of characters. So, and uh, if you have a couple of uh, big pros such as Jungle Man and a couple other big guys uh, in the scene, that may not be a poker pro, but also like a businessman or people that uh, have poker as a passion. This, this is probably going to make like a very nice uh, game environment for the audience uh, to watch. I also happen to believe that a game full of pros and with all the best players in the world will be awesome for the audience to see. 
So I like that idea too. I just don't like don't 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 know if this is possible uh, to 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 make this happen. But for instance, if I'm playing the game, I simply don't care who I'm playing against. The decision is mine. It's all my bankroll. And uh, if I if I think I can beat them, and if I want to play on the show, and I don't freaking care. So it's gonna make everybody feel bad and miserable at the game. I don't care. But of course, there's a uh, uh, all that situation we just talked about, and of course you rather choose some other games uh, uh, to play, which is better for you as a professional. Right. Yeah, it's really so, fun. It's really funny when when you say that because a lot of pros nowadays they are sort of I mean they're not scared, but they are looking for the best spots, so they're trying to avoid the toughest lineups. And obviously, high stakes poker historically has always been just crazy, crazy action, and that usually means there's a few players in there splashing around. And I'm not gonna say that it was very soft because the pressure of the money is a whole different kind yeah. of ball game. And these stacks are really deep. And Phil Ruffin is sitting on like eight hundred thousand dollars. So good luck calling that if you're putting to the test. But um, it is interesting to see the balance of the lineup. Yeah, that's uh, well said because uh, I think that over the it's different when you play a poker tournament. Because no matter how high of a poker tournament you're playing, like uh, the money effect won't have that much pressure as you have in a cash game. Right. So, so that's very well said. And uh, if you consider also that a poker career it can be developed uh, on many ways. And um, I mean, I'm a poker ambassador. I like. Uh, I, I like to help other people. I like to help, help people get started. I, I like to s spread the word about poker, poker lifestyle, and what it is to become a poker pro. So then it starts to make more sense to be to be on that game too as a pro. If you're only a pro and you play for the money only, then it makes, it makes less sense. Let's have a look at this hand. There's an interesting flop here given the cards that everyone has. So let's see what happens. Antonio bets. Croak has the better kicker. Call. And he'll call. Klein. Well, Klein's going to call. Call. Two plays to the turn. Brick hits the turn. Check. Antonio. Still probably thinks he has the best hand. Maybe putting the others on second pair and a draw. And Croak thinking again. Again folds the best hand. Wow. But it was marginal. Antonio could have easily had the better kicker. Antonio probably thinking that he had the best hand after Croak folds the jack nine. What do you, what do you think about that fold? Is that, is that is that normal to give up that pair with the middle kicker? Uh, I don't think it's a good fold whenever you're playing a creative opponent like Antonio, because opponent could easily have the king queen there, some sort of ace queen as well, uh, some sort of straight draw with uh, with uh, with a pair. So I don't like to fold to fold the hand on the turn. As for the as for the same reason, I'm not very a big fan of uh, betting again on the turn with that hand because you can only get called by better. As we see, the guy folding a better hand that proves my point, yeah. right? So so if you bet that turn the turn card again and you get called, you know you're drawing for maybe five outs at best. Uh, on, on, on that spot. So I would like to talk more about like uh, Antonio's play, uh, uh, Patrick uh, Spandiari. <laughs> Spandiari, yeah. Be yeah, because uh, that's some sort of a hand that we have. Um, I think that when I I ran this this in study and played this kind of hands, it, it looks more to me of a hand of like a, two streets of value then more of like uh three streets of value kind of thing that's that that's that's very interesting because there are so many different ways to play 
this hand is actually really interesting too. And I'm just going to go right back in time here into the time machine. Um, yeah, to finish that off, you put yourself on a spot where what would you do when you bet the flop and you bet the turn? You have no pot control whatsoever in the hand. River is a blank. You check your opponent goes all in. What what would you do with with a jack and no kick? I mean, that's really tough because you're opening yourself up to be both bluffed but also taken to value town. Exactly. But you taking to value town depends on who you're playing against. Yeah. Because I know that he made that play because of the players he were he was playing against. And if he's playing that against for for the hand, for instance. In a worse Citro, like Vanessa, mm -hmm. on his left, yeah. I think he'll probably have played the hand differently. Right. That, that's why it's so tough to, to play hands to flop pairs and then, and then decide after the flop what you're going to do. Because in a lot of times, these players are so good and so creative that they're going to find ways to make this really, really tough and really, really expensive. Um, this hand is very interesting as well. Let's watch because I want your opinion on how Bill Klein plays his pocket kings. I think we just lost our audio on the VLC player. It's all part of the live production. Let me let me restart VLC player here and make sure that works just fine. Hold on, why is it not working? It's kind of weird. Yeah, you got no audio either, yeah. right? Do you hear it or not? No, no, no. No, it's it's gone. All right, let me let me start up. Let me start up. Yeah, uh, start up again. I mean, I mean, uh, I would like to say also a uh, big hello for everybody in the chat. Thank you so much for tuning in. Jeff, of course, Jeff Platt here with us, the man of myth. Uh, here, Diana, daddy life, daddy life is awesome. <laughs> uh, cannot uh, uh, have asked for anything better to happen in my life. I'm very, very happy and uh, cannot uh, choose anything to do over my daughter nowadays. It's, it's there, There's no way I have, a, let's say, an option anymore. So that's pretty cool. Uh, true love. For all my fellow Brazilians, todos meus amigos brasileiros, grande abraço para vocês. Obrigado por conectarem aqui com a gente também. I see that we have every uh, people from all over the world such as Ireland, uh, Brazil, of course, uh, United States, Jamie Gold will never be on that list, Shen Connors, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Bonomo could as well be on the list because he's not only a good poker player, but also uh, had one of those crazy runs so when you talk about a poker pro that had one of those crazy runs, you need to put that guy on the top of any list, right? Such as like Bonomo, such as Coleman. Uh, you, need, you need to also uh, include those guys on the list. If you say so, if I would put the guy on my top 10 list, I would say no. And I have my reasons for doing that. But it does, doesn't mean that if I see a, a poker list, uh, with his name on that I would disagree. Of course not. I would say it's well deserved. Um, I mean, that that list thing is probably like a very good exercise because, as I said, people normally think that th uh, there's no way of measurement. It's, right. a, it's about talent. If you if you like if you like blue, I like red. And that's that's what it is because all those players in that list, they're they're big uh, poker players. Yeah, no, it, it, like we could make a list of one hundred players. That's that's easily. That's <laughs> easily if you spot if you spot like the top three hundred yeah players in the world nowadays, you probably don't want to have any of them at your, at your poker table. Right. But that's that's obvious. We have like millions of poker players. If you take, for instance, like the the GPI, and you take the, the top five hundred on GPI, they all know perfectly well, and they're big time poker crushers. That's that's for sure. I I am probably very confidently number sixty four thousand on the list. I feel really strong about that. Sixty four thousand is my is my rank. Exactly. 
and it does not mean you are a silly villain really, or a stupid poker player. <laughs> that means you can crush other souls as well. You just don't play as much as them. I like to play against the guys who are ranked below me. That's that's my that's my main goal. <laughs> yeah, but like, uh, how how are you gonna grow up, son? Right. If you only if you only play against players that are worse than you, how can you develop? How can you be a better player? But that's also what pays the bills, though. And and for the people in the chat, let us know: Do you always want to play in the softest lineups and pay the bills, or do you like a challenge? Do you like a challenge? Do you like to play when you know? The, the big bad boy aggressive guy is in town or or when that girl is sitting next to you who's always check raising like just let us know in the chat how you feel about a tough lineup uh felipe i restarted vlc while you were talking it's like you and i have been doing this show for years i love this this back and forth is perfect we are back in the moment bill klein pocket kings vanessa self makes it two and a half thousand antonio s Fendiari makes the call with 10 nine suited and we are on to bill klein who has pocket kings Kings. Well, he's going to decide to trap these pros. Oh, hello. Pete in with seven high. Does he does put out some interesting facts, don't he, that guy? Yeah, he's good, that guy. And the trap works. Check. David Pete, the hapless victim in this one. And Klein, the check raise. And look at those faces. Who's trapping who? I really like how Viffer's playing this. Rather than Cole checking behind Klein, he tickled him with a small bet. And now just smooth calls the check raise. Yeah, Eric. He don't, he don't tweet much, but when he does, it's usually fun. Yeah, yeah, he's got a good sense of How many will you follow, Barry? Well, Klein's got to believe he's up against Jax. Biffer just calls again. You should be working with me on projects. So at this point, Felipe, Bill Klein is, is probably thinking that Viffer is very likely just to have a jack, right? The jack is what he's mostly thinking about? Yeah, and like it's it gets a little bit confusing because like the the commentator says like in the trap works, no, no. it's a freaking five of the beat chain, you know? Yeah. And the, the trap doesn't work. <laughs> and uh and uh, like Jeff is saying, the trap exactly <laughs> trap doesn't work. And uh, if 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 you if you think that a guy like Peach, which is like an agro poker player, has jacks on that spot, I I think that's tough to put a guy on jacks. I think he might have might have uh, raised again with the hand. No, I mean know? I mean just a pair of jacks. Like he just has a jack. Oh, right. Cool. You know, like yeah, I, yeah. He he mainly he mainly. Uh, I, I don't think he's playing a jack anymore because once he calls the turn card uh, for to the river card, I think he's going to be playing something better. You know? Uh, may, uh, which includes any five. Like he's playing the seven five off, of course he will be playing any five. Uh, I mean, this guy will be playing the deuce five. I mean, what is Viffer scared about here? I, I mean, I know Bill Klein is 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 a tight player, but this is a very very strong hand. This is just bad acting, in huh. my opinion, and it's and it's bad play as well, because uh, your opponent doesn't have a full house there never, and whenever your opponent's betting that small on turns and that small on rivers, that makes up. Uh, a value hand, which it's probably not the nuts. So if you are another player and you decide to play the regs and you hit him, you 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 need to raise the hand. Right. Like uh, you have your you have a bad image, and you you have hit the flop and you're playing against a tight gentleman that I don't think he ever learned to fold those over pairs yet. So. I don't like the play. I think it's a terrible play. I'm sorry, bad play. So we should just go all in on the river or make it like 100 and, 110,000? All the chips, either you're bluffing, either you, you have it, That that's some sort of hand that's like, uh, if he has the, the kings, good game. I'm going to rebuy. This is a cash game. Or if I'm playing for all my money, I, I shouldn't even be there. So you, you need to play. That's That's what I mean. Like if if I put myself up to this game, 
I'm going to play optimal. I don't care about the money. If I'm playing there, I have this, the money sorted. So I'm going to play my best game. So some uh, sometimes I feel that the players, they are in, in this game and they're caring about the money. That's when they're going to win less or become losers in the game. Yeah, no, that's definitely, definitely true. And I think I, when you have trip fives there, you should just be fist pumping and super, super happy in that in that situation. Uh, and it, it's it's a very interesting sort of look back at the times because it probably says a lot about how how poker was played back then and this is almost 10 years ago the first season of high stakes poker is like more than 15 years ago which is kind of crazy to think about so when you watch old poker hands on tv and in broadcasts you also have to realize that the game wasn't nearly as advanced back then so for the people watching at yeah. home i think i think personally if you can be like one dollar two dollar no limit online you can you can be a winning player on high stakes poker from back in those days. That's that's uh, seventy five percent true. Okay. Because just because the online environment, it's totally different from the live game. Right. So you might as well understand about the game, have a strong fundamentals of the game, because nobody wins online playing one two, and you don't know anything about the game. Of course, you understand a lot about the game, but live poker, it's a whole not another game. You, you're going to bring all those, everything you know to the game, but it still need some key adaptations to make. So I don't think that's hundred percent true. That's why I agree with you. And I said 75, right? Uh, one fun fact that you didn't know, and I'm going to tell you now is, uh, uh, on those uh, days back in the day, I I was I had started my career as a writer, and uh, uh, either writing columns and articles, and I wrote so many times about high stakes poker hands, such as poker after dark poker hands, and I would be the guy the pro doing the analysis. I remember I had a. Uh, I'm actually going back. I'm writing for card player once again, mm -hmm. but like be back in the day, like uh, I used to write for card player too. And I remember when I, re I, I wrote like top nine mistakes on poker after dark, oh. uh, top, top five, uh, miss reds over high stakes poker. So that, in that moment, I always thought this game wasn't like the, top game in the world right when you talk about uh quality you know no you're right i mean this was a soft game it, there's no other way about yeah. it so so i'm i'm just trying to be honest on the point that uh putting myself exposing myself saying that i did not think that this game back in the day was a top game either right of course the game changed the game changed a lot but what made this game super special was the mix of the top players and a lot of money. Right. That was the made the made the game very appealing. It's true. And the cash on the table, the cash on the table yeah. just made it so special. And for the people who are watching right now and wondering, what am I getting myself into? This is Run It Back, where I have a guest on the show and we watch High Stakes Poker, or sometimes we watch Poker After Dark or WSOP episodes, and we just have fun and talk shit about what's happening at the table. And also, I'd like to let you guys know that all seven seasons of High Stakes Poker are now available on Poker Go. Use the promo code POKER30, POKER30, to get $30 off the annual subscription. So don't forget about that if you want to watch High Stakes Poker. All seven seasons are available there right now. And we have some awesome uh, strategy content on there as well called 2020 Hindsight, where Matt Berkey breaks down the WSOP main event final tables from a strategy perspective, which is very interesting, especially the further you go back in time, the crazier these plays become looking at it through the prism of poker in 2020. Um, Felipe, what do you do to stay sharp nowadays? Like what are, what are some of the things you do to stay on top of your game? Uh, yeah, I love that. I, I'm uh, of course, I watch a lot of stuff on uh, poker go. Definitely recommend uh, for you guys to sign up and uh, to have some fun as well in order to learn the game as well. So it's, it's good either way. And uh, for me, uh, the, the 
most uh, the the biggest thing that keeps me in shape nowadays is to be a, a leader of a community. So as a leader of my community, where I train thousands of players, uh, I get to know in, in adult, get to know like uh, hundreds of hands, hundreds of important hands every week that come to my attention. Right. Either, either for me to understand what's happening or to give an advice of what happened. So that keeps me up to date of uh, everything that's happening and uh, and so on. Another thing that I love to do is to have a couple of uh, other other pros, other people you you work with and you respect to 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 pretty much discuss strategy. So once you do those two things, I think you're pretty much updated to 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 what to what's going on. Uh, I like also to understand about the games I'm coaching people, such as, let's say, some games I don't play, I, I do an immersion on, on that game, and I play that game for a while so I can understand that environment, so I can give advice. I don't like to be like a, a poker coach, uh, like most, uh, that uh, just because you understand about poker, that you can give uh, advice away and say that's good, if you don't leave that environment. So that's, that was actually one of the reasons I didn't play too much bigger games in the past because I felt like if I only jump on those games, I would lose the connection to my people. I would lose the connection to all the players that look up to me playing in the, in the, in the middle and lower levels. So as poker is my life, I only do this. I'm gladly and I'm, and I'm happy to say that I can play all the games and I dedicate all my hours to the game. So that's fine. But at that time I used to play more. So I, I needed to, to make a choice. Right. No, that makes total sense. Uh, for the people in the chat, please like this video and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube and our Facebook. If you are new to this, we are releasing tons and tons of your favorite poker moments on social media every single week. We just posted some crazy hands, Sammy Farha against Patrick Antonius. We can actually we can actually pull it up after this. I don't care. We can just watch that stuff as well. Um, lots of stuff happening in the chat as well. Um, the best man is referencing on YouTube uh, if we're watching the Galfon challenge. That obviously is a whole nother story. Like, that's just crazy stuff happening. Um, there, I guess they were talking about some kind of new game. Um, I might have to do some research on that. Also, shout outs to Adriano and. Muralha from Brazil who are in the chat on YouTube. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Um, if you have any questions for Felipe or for myself, please make sure to send those over as we are watching High Stakes Poker Season 7 right now. And let's let's see what's happening on this next hand because obviously we've been talking for quite a while. So let's let's listen to what's happening here in the action as we come back from commercial here. Poker. 32 is time to go this. It's time? It's... Well, it's approaching time. <laughs> I gotta have kids, man, you know? Barry Greenstein, raising with Queen Jack. And Klein defends with Ace-9. So we have pro versus businessman again. Two of us. Heads up to the front. Businessman flops top pair and bets. Bet is 5,000. Pro flops the second pair and calls. Checks. Pro hits trips and businessman check calls. 10 on the river. I don't think that scares Barry. He's just thinking about how much to extract. And he decides on 28,000. And he's right. Jack's good, huh? Yep. Nice hand. Jack is good. Barry gets value once again. Barry Greenstein looking really good here on high stakes poker. It's a shame he's no longer playing at the high stakes, but he definitely played on every single season of high stakes poker only four players played on every single season barry greenstein doyle brunson 
um, Antonio Esfandiari and Daniel Negreanu. Those four are the only ones, and obviously every season had a rotation of players. So Daniel, you don't see him now, but he'll show up in one of the later episodes on season seven. We've got some legends yeah, here. They, they, had, they definitely had the edge on that game back, the, back then. Yeah, for sure. Look, look at this old school Vegas stuff. So cool. Series of poker for 35 years. But it was Binion's ability to bring in the high rollers by refusing to institute a house limit on betting and start up the high stakes cash games that shaped Vegas forever. As journalist Howard Schwartz said, when you met Benny Binion, you felt you'd been part of history. And for a water There's water. One I mean, let me just say this about Benny Binion. We have a short documentary on PokerGo right now. It's called Legends of the Game. It's about Stu Unger. It's about Benny Binion. It's about the history of poker going back to the casinos in Venice and all sorts of crazy stuff that is going on. If you love poker and you love the history of the game, you have to watch that stuff. Um, Felipe, what's your relationship with Vegas like? We just saw some footage of the old downtown Fremont Street. Do you still get excited when you come off the plane and you know the, the, the air is warm and you can already hear the slot machines? Do you get excited for that? You know what was the first thing ever I did in Vegas? When uh, first thing ever I did in Vegas, you went to Binions. Exactly. Me too. Man, this is only the people that love poker the most can do. When I reach Vegas, I say, ah, you know this strip, fuck the strip. You know what this uh, strip clubs? Let's go. No kidding. <laughs> but this is, but, I mean, I. That was the first place I did. I had a recorder, uh, and I went to there, filmed the Hall of Fame. Man, I was so passionate about this, you know? So that's why I'm very, very happy to be doing High Stakes Poker and seeing this history here with you. I feel very, uh, my heart is warm. Very cool. I love it. I love it. I love it. That's so cool. Yeah, no, I have the same sort of feeling. The, the first, I have a photo of myself, probably the first day that I was in Vegas, sitting in front of the... Um, the, the Poker Hall of Fame and the main event wall where they had all the main event winners at Binion's. Yeah. And take uh, take the escalator up to the old tournament room. And, you know, I played, I played some poker in the Binion's poker room to just feel sort of the history of the game, Me which too. is so cool. Um, and, and I had to go to Bobby's room right away. That those, those two places yes. were like the highest on my list. Um, this summer, the World Series of Poker obviously being postponed. It's being moved to the fall. We were still waiting on the full details. Were you planning on, you know, you, you just became a father. Congratulations, by the way, once again. Thank um, you. Did you have big plans to play or were you going to take the summer off? Well, I already had my rental home. I had my house rent. I had my car rent. I had everything set. Wow. So, of course, uh, every time WSOP is over, we're looking after WSOP next year. It's like uh, uh, what we like to do. <laughs> And uh, uh, of course, with all the situation happening, we need to be safe now. And whenever it's able and whenever it's possible to be ran, of course, it's going to happen. So it's the same thing as I say to my fellow uh, students here. There are 14 day way to play tournaments and go higher. There are tournaments every day. There will always be. Just take your time, study more chill out and then wait for the opportunity to come so of course waiting for the opportunity to come whenever wsop uh is going to be happening of course i'm going to be there and now that i have the opportunity to play all the wsops back in the day i couldn't do that i couldn't afford to do that so i needed to go to wsop towards the main event and play a couple of events play the main so it's been a few years that I'm able to come to the WSOP and, and grind the whole uh, schedule. And uh, as you become more experienced and more wise a little bit, a little bit, <laughs> uh, you, you, you take some other routes in your life. And that's been pretty awesome. So that means that uh, uh, my daughter will be traveling with me for sure. Otherwise, I cannot go anywhere. Right. I could go. I could go to play a poker tournament close to my place, get back. That would be fine. But if I spent over a week away from my family, that would be not worth it. So, so it makes no sense for me to go play. Let's have a look at this river card: two pair for Doyle and a set for Antonio. 
pot you want. Exactly. So you do like 70% of the pot or something, and you just click it instantaneously, and it's like. Some weird amount. Your bet yeah. is like 1,000. Antonio makes an exactly. almost pot sized bet, that's, and that's, Doyle doesn't like it. He knows he's now up against either a stone cold bluff or a monster hand. Risen should get credit for that, because I think he was the first one that really online did all the weird raise sizes. And he sees the bad news. Wow. That's tough. Top set against top two? Yeah. Very tough. It's very easy to make money when you have top set against top two pair, let me tell you that. Antonio. That's for sure. We know we know that we need to put that on the account of uh, the poker variance. <laughs> yeah. So so that's why some players, let's say you can have a um, a tremendous talented poker player and play high stakes and get smashed for a lot of money, you know. But if you take a look in terms of big blinds, which is how I take a look on my cash gameplay. That will never be an issue because I get this question a lot, especially from Brazilians. People come to me and say that I play on these big games, play on TV games. They come to me, oh, have you ever played like against uh, Dan, Dan Brazilian, for instance? Right, right, right. And wow, the guy plays for a lot of money. I say, like, if you check out for how many big blinds those people are playing, and you're doing a, your one two session and you're leaving your table with your 300 BB profit. You're doing better than these people, you know. <laughs> you just need to look out to 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 look for uh, the 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 game itself, and forget a little bit about the money. And uh, so that's that's what I said. Like, uh, let's suppose I played. Let's suppose I played uh, uh, my my whole sessions during the year, and I profited whatever uh, million dollars. And if I jump in one game of this. I don't want to lose $1 million in one night. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You know what I mean? It makes no sense. Otherwise, I need to play this game every day or twice, three times a week. If that doesn't make sense, you need to have some other goals with it. But also, the funny thing is, is that on high stakes poker, I think a lot of the pros took huge shots with their bankroll because the opportunity was very, very good. So... As far as bankroll management goes, high stakes poker is probably the first and the best opportunity to throw it out the window and say, okay, 30% of my bankroll, we're going tonight. Yeah, that's why I don't want to say I'm any better of any of these people because I, I decided not to. Right. I'm not, I don't want to say that, but I know that I had a bunch of friends that went to the show and did that and did not turn out to be as good as they thought it were. Right. So, yeah, it's tough. What's what's the? I mean, for the people who are watching right now, by the way, don't forget to like this video if you're on YouTube or Facebook. Doesn't matter. Liking the video helps us a lot. Getting found by other people. I have new guests on this show every single week, two guests a week, and I may or may not, may or may not, be having Patrick Antonius on the show next week. No promises. Nice. May or may not having Patrick Antonius. Other guests that are coming up include Maria Ho. Igor Kurganov. We're going to have lots of great people on the show. I just want to let everyone know to keep tuning in for Run It Back. And we are watching whatever the guest wants to watch. So probably a combination of some high-stakes poker, poker after dark, and maybe some WSOP action. Um, Felipe, taking shots. We all do it. We all have done it. I once had $3,000 to my name, and I sat down with $1,000 in a cash game. That for me was very irresponsible, but also very fun, and it's it's a funny story now. It was a twenty it was a twenty forty mix game. I sat down. I was I was break even, so no no bad blood there. Um, what's your yeah. biggest shot you've ever done? Uh, oh, I don't like when you. I'm very honest, guy. When you ask me that, I'm gonna say some bullshit about myself now. <laughs> so um, I was I was never a big fan. Of staking, okay. Uh, I always, I always, because I always had bad experience with staking. Which means when I moved to a big game, uh, playing cash game was I was playing in Vegas, the two five game, and one guy approached me to play a bigger game because he saw me as a huge winner on that game, and I started playing big and I started to make a lot of money. 
And when I wanted to go and play some other nice events, the guy turned me down. Huh. So my heart was broken. Let's say it that way. So whenever that happened to me, I was a little bit bittersweet on when we're talking about uh, this kind of staking stuff. So I have always been aggressive with my bankroll. I've always been aggressive with my bankroll. So I'll be lying to you if I said the di difference. So I took, I, I never did anything big, big, so crazy. But let's say I play on big, big events where my bankroll wasn't like particularly the, the, the perfect bankroll for that. So let's say I played a bunch of like, uh, how much money do you need to have to play on the 25Ks and the 50Ks? I'll tell you that I played a couple of 25Ks, uh, uh, not looking back, 100% on myself, no staker, no nothing. Wow. You know? So I did that. And I actually, uh, I had a big, bigger, big opportunities over that where I final table this 25K over the Monte Carlo PT final, such as the PCA as well. The PCA, oh, yeah. I, I'm not saying I had 100% because I have a good friend of mine, which is Mustafa Kanich, and we swapped three. So I had 97. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, so I, I've been doing that because uh, playing more, a little more aggro on my bankroll because I have a technique for that, which means I... I I play pretty much on games which are very good for my bankroll and ROI, and whenever I have that cover, I play a little bit more more aggro or, or on games where I'm not very I don't have an edge at all, or where where my edge is small. We got some questions in the chat. Uh, Pico is saying most DGENs would put the whole three thousand on the table. Pico, I was scared shitless sitting down with a thousand dollars, let alone three thousand dollars. It was all I had to my name. Twenty forty at the Rio during the World Series of Poker, and I was, I thought I was the coolest guy in town playing twenty forty. It's also the highest stakes I've ever played, by the way. Never played higher than twenty forty. Uh, I love the mixed games, but that was uh, definitely uh, quite an adrenaline rush. Um, a question here uh, about the WSOP. Uh, Adriano is asking, uh, is it going to move online? Is it going to be postponed? Well, there's been certain conversations about having online events, and there's also conversations about it being postponed and held later in the year. So you're just going to have to stay tuned and, and wait and see for new announcements. We don't know much either. So you know, when the news comes out, I'll be sure to discuss it on the show uh, or also have it on uh, pokercentral.com where we bring all the latest news as it pertains to the World Series of Poker. Then a uh, question... Yeah, if you allow and if you allow me to say, actually, yeah. uh, obviously, obviously not for the Americans because of regulations, but we're running the WSOP Super Secret on GG Poker right now. Right, right. And it's been huge. Like last Sunday, I uh, see, I played in the 25K again. <laughs> <laughs> this Sunday, we played on a big bunch of uh, high roller events, actually the WSOP events, the 25K, the 10K, 10K uh, PLO, all official ring events uh, over uh, the GG network. So that's pretty awesome if you can play and you're not from the United States or in Canada, for instance. Uh, you're more than welcome to play for Brazilian. Of course, you already have an account and you're playing poker with us there. That's awesome. Yeah, no, online poker has been absolutely out of control with super high rollable online on party poker starting also in just a few days we're going to have some live, live streams of that action also on poker go and on facebook and youtube so you definitely do not have to get bored during the quarantine and obviously find a way to play legally wherever you're based we have people from all over the world watching so we can't really get into the specifics but please find out where you can play if you love to play i'm sure there's a, there's a way to do that uh, and then of course keep watching this show because we're watching some really high stakes action um felipe also another question here um from adriano he says regarding short deck poker do you think short deck will get more popular outside of asia or do you think it will mostly be still be a game for the businessmen in asia who obviously they love short deck you know do you think that's going to change well yeah first of all thank you a lot to Dream for the message for the compliments Murale Behi, all the friends from brazil in the chat thank you so much uh well i don't think that game will be that that huge i think that game will be sticking around for sure and will be a good option. We will also be a format 
to play at the WSOP, at other stops, such as we have PLO, such as we have mix games. But I don't think that will be getting so much bigger. And um, on a history note, uh, for you, uh, I'm sure you guys don't know that, but in Brazil, when I started playing poker, I started playing the short deck game because that was a very popular high stakes game in Brazil, the No Limit Holding short deck. So I played that game since 2005. Wow. And uh, when I saw this game coming back up and getting uh, more uh, uh, attention, I was very excited because I kind of quit playing short game because short deck because I couldn't play anymore. And uh, so I like the game. I think the game is very interesting. And uh, it has uh, some sort of dynamic, which is uh, very, very, very nice. But I don't think this game is going to get so much bigger. It will get big. We'll, we'll stay, in my opinion. But we're not going to be like a massive hit or massive success. Right. I, I sort of feel the same. I think for the super, super high stakes, it will always remain interesting. And I think we'll see live streams of that game. But it's going to be yes. hard to find, you know, mid stakes and low stakes games of short deck uh, by the way Vanessa Selps has a straight Robert Croak has ace jack here in this situation um, let's see if Croak can get away from his ace jack so gross god I just feel like why would you bet that river because she's hoping you'll call I fold but you already figured that out. I mean, the river card was awful for Vanessa as well because Croak is, is probably much more likely to call if the river is a blank because the king scares him, obviously. Yeah, but, but listen, when I told you I wrote about the top nine, top five mistakes on that game back in the Card Player magazine and the written articles, this is one I remember I spotted. <laughs> you, and I'm going to give that away, I don't care. Like... A, you see that Barry and Vanessa, when they have strong hands, they always bet a third or lower on the river. It's bottom line. It's bottom line. It's something that was like a blocked over here. Right. And then they couldn't make a big bet on when they had value because there was a lot, already so much money. I think they were thinking like, oh, if I get called here more 30K, 40, 50K, that's enough. That's good. I'm going to rake that pot. And uh, whenever they're bluffing, they're always going, Okay, your bet plus hundred thousand. You know what? I'm all in. Just check that out. Yeah, it, it, it happens the whole whole time. The whole episode's never different. You could read in like a book if you took this advice. I'm telling you, <laughs> back in the day, and see that the game, you'd crush. Oh man, it's so true though. Bet sizing has changed so much. It's it's just a yep. different game nowadays. It's a completely different game. All right, listen in on this hand, and let's, let's see where this goes. Antonio has a straight flush draw, and a nine would make him a straight also. Viffer decided to jump barefoot into a cactus field. Now Barry Greenstein has to raise here. He knows one of these boys has a draw. Wow, huge raise. He does make it 30,000. Now Antonio. He must be wondering if somebody has a bigger heart draw. Barry could have an ace 10 of hearts. Really thinking this over. And a big raise by Antonio, 106,000. And this gets rid of the barefoot boy. Well, Barry's not calling here. 
And it's hard to imagine him folding with only two hands that can beat him. So that only leaves one option. Oh, well. And that's the option. Once or twice. Antonio calls. We have the biggest pot of the season, just shy of $600,000. Antonio just asked Barry if he wanted to run it twice, but Barry always runs it just once. Barry wants to run it once. We have almost 600 k in the middle. Queen of hearts here on the turn. Antonio makes his flush. Barry still has outs, obviously. What an incredible hand this is. No pair. Abracadabra. Yep. There it is. Antonio wins the hand. Is it standard to get it in here? Like, are we just always happy to get it in here with seven, eight of hearts? Oh, man. When you ask, when you ask that to me, uh, I have my opinion over this, and I hate it. Right. I hate it. I think, I think the play is very poor because Barry is the crusher at this game. <laughs> I'm sorry. Barry Greenston has always been the crusher at this game, okay? He's always been playing on top of this game. He always understands really well other players' strategy, and he, he always knows where he's at. So when he places this check raise on the flop, it's a beautiful bet size. It's a beautiful bet size to make other players commit mistakes just like that. In my opinion, that's a huge mistake that's no way that Barry is bluffing here on this spot. You're always going to run into a hedge. You have position over the guy. So why not? You're playing huge. you deep, so deep stack. Why not call? Why not call the check raise? You have position, see a turning card, you hit your flush. You know, your opponent's going to slow down. Your opponent's going to bet you can call. You have decisions to make. That's the scenario where you're loving to play deep stack. You're, you're you're in heaven that you're playing deep stack. I mean, if you're playing a 50k stack there, you get check raised for 30k. Yes, yeah, no brainer. E just exactly. go all in for 50k. You have seven eight hearts, pretty much a lot of equity. And uh, despite of the commentator doing this wrong again, he got a double belly and uh, and a flush draw. Not only the flush draw, right. so and and a gutter. So uh, so he has a lot of outs. But I completely hate the play where you raise here, where you don't use your poker skill. It's it's pretty much like what if if he had to if Antonio was here, uh, amazing guy, I love Antonio. If amazing was here, if Antonio was here discussing this hand with me, and I could ask him what's the range you're putting Barry to check check raise you on that flop, he would say I'm crushed. <laughs> He'll say I'm flipping. Right. You know. So, so I don't like the play at all. This is just my opinion. I'm not right, I'm not wrong, but I have my uh, fundamentals to that I'm based to. I love Gary, uh, I love Barry's play. It's very unfortunate that he lost uh, this hand, but this is short term, that's what we're saying. Like if you lose $1 million in this game, you can easily lose a million dollars and be the best player on the table. What I do wanna say though, is that I hope that Antonio is playing this style to advertise that he is this crazy to all the millions of people watching. Because if that's the case, this is the smartest play ever. It's, that's not, man, you play poker for to make money, right? Right, right. If you're, po if you're a poker po player, you, you need to think about the game first. And then if you, if you, if you I don't know, maybe you, maybe you staked, maybe you, 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 you just don't care too much about what's, ha what, what's happening. I'm not saying that this is what's happening. Uh, uh, one, once again, this is just my opinion about the hand. Antonio is a big hero, a big fan. I love the guy. And uh, the, I want you guys to understand that. But I don't like the play from a perspective about the poker fundamentals. Because he's a terrific poker player to play this hand better. Right. In my humble opinion. So, but of course, he can play that way, as you said. Oh, let's build a huge pot here. Maybe I spike my all my outs. I win a 600k pot on television, and I get all the poker deals out there, and people want to sponsor me. 
maybe. Or maybe that you get, cross... yeah, maybe you get into all the good private games because everybody thinks you're a crazy person. Uh, that that plays a part on it. Of course, that plays a part on it. I I actually heard that from a friend of mine one day. Yeah, I I have a very good friend of mine, which is Mustafa Kanic, and I was at the Party Millions Bahamas final table, and I was second in chips out of seven, one million dollars first place. I ran a huge bluff versus the chip leader. Did not work. Okay. I end up busting on fifth place for like 200 and something. And and I lost 800,000 because I could have won the tournament for sure. And I talk about the hand. And when I analyzed the hand, I said to myself, I fucked up. I said three words, I fucked up. I understand that was a mistake. And when I come to talk to, to him, he say, bro, this was not a mistake. Next time you are at the final table, you do that. People think you crazy Brasilia bluff. And then you get paid off. So he told me exactly what you telling me on that big stage running that huge bluff versus chip leader that I had the balls, that Antonio has a bigger ball than mine. And of course, the guy is an absolute legend for doing that play. Absolute legend for doing that play. So this is basically my way to advertise that whoever plays on high stakes poker in season eight, just keep going all in, make those crazy bluffs. It's the best advertisement for you as a poker player. Felipe, thank you so much for being on the show. This was the final hand. If people want to follow you, how can they follow you? Where can they follow you? And what are you up to these days? My nickname is Mojave as the desert. So Felipe Mojave which is Mojave in Portuguese. You can find me on all social media. Pretty much on Twitch. I'm Twitching all my poker games, including the big ones, such as the WSOP 25K. I played on Twitch, live cards up over my channel. So if you want to uh, come and hang out. We also have a pretty good uh, project that I would like to speak for like 30 seconds if I have the chance, which is the No Markup Mondays no meet Mondays. So every Monday I play over my channel. Documentary is about climate change, animal exploitation, this kind of stuff to teach people on these big issues we're having with the world nowadays. And in exchange, other than giving recipes and talking about the subject, I let you guys come and buy action of my tournaments up to 50% with no markup. Wow regardless of the tournament. So we won the GG series, 50 bucks event, no markup for all my folks. We happen to be doing that and being very successful. It's been a, a, a true blessing. And this is my main project now that I'm very proud to have every Monday or Tuesday because Tuesdays are Mondays for us as well. Right. Uh, uh, that's our mentality. So you guys can find me all over social media and I do have to thank you for this opportunity, amazing opportunity to be talking about these games with these poker legends and also happen to be here with you, which is a guy that not only very good com on communication, but also understands a lot about poker. And say that I'm a watcher, I'll be watching the game, especially if you have my buddy Patrick Antonio uh, coming up. This is a poker legend. This, should be, this guy should be on the top 10 if somebody has the balls to make those big plays. We're talking about my buddy, my man, Patrick Antonio is here. Absolutely. We will definitely make sure to get Patrick on the show. Uh, Felipe, thanks once again for being on the show. You guys at home, thanks so much, so much for watching. Follow us, like us, subscribe. Poker Go and Poker Central, don't miss out. And one final time, use the promo code POKER30, so POKER30, to take $30 off the annual subscription of Poker Go. And you can watch all seven seasons of High Stakes Poker right now on Poker Go, along with a lot of hot World Series of Poker action. So don't miss out. Catch you guys on Tuesday. Let me get this right. Tuesday, 1 p.m. Eastern time, which I believe is 10 p.m. Central European time or early on the West Coast, 10 a.m. So join us on Tuesday for the next show. For now, this was Run It Back, and we'll catch you guys next week.